Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Real Real Podcast with me, Natalie Barbu. In today's episode, I'm bringing it back with a solo episode. We haven't done solo episodes in a really long time, and it's because I had so many wonderful guests lined up. So I hope that you guys like the episodes with the guests. I really want to like step up my production game on the podcast. I feel like the solo episodes are fine, like being chill here, but honestly, my dream hopefully this can get done by the end of this year, is to have my own like little studio, whether it's inside my apartment or it's in my office. I feel like in my apartment would be best though, just in case we ever decide to like move offices, it's not going to be affected. So ideally it would be inside my apartment. The thing about that though is that I feel bad asking guests to come to my apartment because I live kind of far in Miami. Like I don't live in like a central part of Miami and so asking people to like drive to come to record for my podcast would be kind of annoying so that's why it works with my office because my office is like a very central spot but I would love to have my own podcast studio so let me know if you guys prefer when people do have studios and watching them because I have this thing where (laughs) whenever I am like interested in something or something like I, for example, I'm interested in long form content right now. I am obsessed with podcasts. I listen to probably like at least like 12 podcasts every week. Like I am always listening to podcasts. I'm going on daily walks in the morning now. And so I usually go on an hour long walk. And on that hour, I always listen to one podcast. So that's like minimum five times a week I'm going on that walk so I'm listening to that podcast and then I also listen to podcasts on my drives so like to and from work so it's like I am always listening to podcasts but not only am I always listening to them I'm always watching them like on YouTube instead of you know maybe a YouTube video or instead of watching TikTok I should say I'll put on a YouTube video podcast and there's some podcasts specifically that I like to watch so for example Alex Earl Hot Mess I don't even know why it's on like Spotify or like an audio format because it's a vlog. Like I'm like, if I were to listen to this, I feel like I like wouldn't understand what I'm listening to because it's a full on vlog. It's not a podcast. But anyways, that's one example. I also love to watch Therapus with Jake Shane, even though that one could definitely be audio only. I just love watching it. Brooke and Connor make a podcast. I've never listened to it. I'm not subscribed to it on like Spotify, but on YouTube I am. Like I love to watch it. And so I just have been really into watching long form content. And so that's why I think that like because I'm into it, everyone else is. I'm like, oh, it must be the trend. So let me know. Obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, you probably are similar to me. But if you're an audio listener, like DM me and let me know what you guys or how you guys feel about the YouTube videos, podcasting, like all of that stuff. Um, And also, I hope that you guys like the guests. I did get one comment that said that I have really interesting guests, but my production sucks, which kind of hurt my feelings because I'm like, guys, I'm trying. I just don't have the money to do a full podcast studio. I'm going to be honest. It's a financial thing. Like I, that's really expensive to set that up. I mean, I'm sure I could do it in my apartment and stuff, but like when I'm traveling, for example, if I'm in LA and I'm recording at a podcast studio, it is minimum $150 for one episode. And that's only with one camera and then two mics. So if I wanted to do like a multi-camera thing, it's like 250 bucks per episode, which I can do, but it's just expensive. So I'm just going to be honest with you guys. That's why I'm really, really trying, but I obviously appreciate the feedback. Like I did appreciate that feedback. I'm like, okay, I got to invest some more time or some more into it. So let me know how you guys feel about that. Uh, I also cannot believe that it's almost April. April is my birthday month. If we have any fellow Aries in the house, Aries, the best, the best zodiac sign. <laughs> Actually, this this episode is so fitting for Aries season because it's talking about impulsivity. And also, I say this very lightheartedly. I don't really like care about horoscopes. Like I do not read my horoscope in terms of like what's going on for this week or the sun is in this and the moon is in this and like this is what's going to happen this week or like Mercury's in retrograde or anything like that. Like I don't subscribe to that, but I do find it very interesting what people say about 
each sign like oh Aries are very impulsive and they're fiery and I'm like yeah that checks off so this episode is going to be about impulsivity it had nothing to do with it being Aries season but you know what it's approaching I actually when does it start March 21st oh my gosh you guys I am recording this on March 21st happy Aries season everyone that is so funny um okay wow that worked out So anyways, April is approaching. April is my birthday month and I am someone that like I don't love my birthday in terms of like because of oh my gosh, I'm like so special. I'm so great. Everyone celebrate me like that's not the reason why I care about my birthday. I don't need to be like the center of attention or anything like that. I like my birthday because I use it as an excuse for my friends and everyone that I, you know, want to be in one spot to like come and visit and to like do something fun like renting a boat or going out to dinner because like if it's just a normal week it's kind of hard to get people to all come together and do something like that but if you're like guys it's my birthday we're celebrating like people then are more inclined to do that and so that is why I love my birthday like I don't ever expect a gift on my birthday like no one we don't do gifts like I don't expect my siblings to get me a gift I don't expect my friends to give me a gift like it's none of that. It's just like, hey, I want you to all like be here with me. Like, let's use this as an excuse to celebrate. And so I am here for it. And so if you're someone that hates your birthday or, you know, you don't want to celebrate it because like you don't want people to like feel, you know, like they have to come and celebrate with you, I would view it more as like, obviously you wouldn't get mad at them if they couldn't come. But I feel like people love to use other like birthdays or celebrations or holidays as an excuse to celebrate and so you might as well make your birthday one of them so that's kind of what it is for me is I just use it as an excuse to like have everyone I love under the same roof and do something fun together and this year I'm not really doing much so I am in my wellness era (laughs) I should say I am have not drank this year so I actually okay that's kind of a lie I did drink one day this year so when I was in LA I went out one night for Tasha's birthday but I think I had like three drinks all night like I it wasn't anything crazy like I wasn't like getting drunk or anything like that um and then I had one other night I think it was like in one one dinner I had a glass of sake like a wine kind of like a sake in I think it was sake Was it wine? I don't even know what I had, but it was just like a glass of wine essentially is what we'll call it. Um, And so I really haven't drank at all this year and that's the only times I've drank and I am so proud of myself because not that I like drank a ton, but like I definitely was drinking more than I wanted to last year. Like I, I used any outing and any social activity as like I have to drink And I started realizing that and I was like, wait, I don't like this. Like, I don't want to feel like I have to drink. I don't want to feel like I have to be, you know, tipsy in order to have fun. And so I wanted to stop this year using that as an excuse for like all of my activities. And I did. And I feel a lot better about it. I am being, I'm going outside more. Like I said, I'm adding daily walks to my like workout routine. So I'm I'm trying to get as close to 10,000 steps every day as possible. Realistically, I'm getting like eight, 9,000 steps. I, I My goal is actually over 7,000. So as long as I get over 7,000 steps in a day, I'm happy. Um, and so my average walking, like the average steps I'm taking every day is like around like 9,000, which is really good because I've just wanted to like move my body more, but lower impact. Um, and I also wanted to just like get outside more and like get some vitamin D and like feel the sun. So being outside for an hour a day to start my morning is so, so, so nice. Uh, it's dark whenever I wake up, but I'll start walking like when it's light outside and it's literally the best way to start my day. I also like do not want to see like any screens. I don't want to be on my phone because I've also noticed I have been like way more addicted to my phone lately. Like I have realized that I have been like on social media so much and not that I'm like it's been affecting my mental health as much but I feel like it's been affecting like I've been getting more headaches my eyesight like I'm like whoa I need to step away from a screen and so starting my morning off with like not just not being on a screen but being outside and like looking in the distance like being in the sun and being in nature has been really really nice and I've just been trying to get outside as much as possible 
And speaking of sunlight, um, in our office right now, you guys might not know this, but we don't have a window. Our window is the hallway, so we don't get any natural light in our office. And we are moving to an office that has a window and it is literally going to change our lives <laughs> because it's so depressing being somewhere where you don't have natural light and you don't have a window. And at first I was like, it's fine because, you know, we have the window to the hallway and so we'll get like the light that comes in from the hallway. But that is not enough light at all. Um... And so I'm really happy that we are finally getting a window, an office with a window. It's going to be such a game changer. And especially like for content too, like just like being in better lighting for content is going to be so nice. So I don't know. I'm just like super, super excited. And I'm catching you guys up on my life because I haven't done a solo episode in so long. But obviously you guys know I've been traveling a lot. I've now been like staying put in Miami for this month. The next time I travel is going to be um, mid-April. So like right before my birthday, actually, I'm going to San Diego and LA because my friend, best friend Julie and I, we got Coachella tickets and we were going to go to Coachella and then the lineup came out. We made the mistake of buying Coachella tickets before the lineup came out, which is so stupid because I feel like Coachella is like not that big of a thing anymore that they don't sell out right away. Like this Coachella actually didn't sell out for like a week. Like it was like a long time. So like we would have been totally fine not buying tickets beforehand but we were like we went in 2018 or 2017 no we went in 2018 together and it was literally the best weekend of our lives like we had so much fun and I've already been to Coachella twice now and so I was like we need to go back together because that weekend was so fun and we went back or we were like we're gonna go back this year we're gonna buy tickets I don't care what the lineup is it's gonna be fun the lineup actually matters because I actually do go for the music and I couldn't have picked a worse lineup. Like, I'm sorry. I know some people might love it. I do not care about a single headliner. Who is it? It's Blink-182, which is cool. But, like, I'm not going to spend that much money to see Blink-182. Um, I think it's them. Isn't it? I could be totally wrong. I could have just made that up. Um, Doja Cat and Lana Del Rey. And I listened to Lana Del Rey's, one of her first albums, the ones the one that's like, this is what makes us girls, and, um, uh, what other songs were on that album? Like, that album is the one that I know. That's, like, so many years old. Like, I listened to Lana in high school. I have not heard a single one of her new, new songs, so, like, I don't care about her. Doja Cat, I am not a fan of. Like, I really don't like Doja Cat in terms of, like, I don't like her music, um, and I would not want to see a performance by her, and then, Blink-182, like, that would be very nostalgic, but, like, I don't care. Um, I wouldn't spend money on that. So, it was just a horrible lineup, in my opinion. I'm pretty sure it was Blink-182. I'm gonna, I know No Doubt was there, and I thought that would have been cool, but, like, I don't know. I didn't even like any of, like, the smaller people. Like, usually, if the headliners aren't good, I'm like, okay, well, at least, like, the smaller people will be good. I didn't even really care for any. Like, there was, like, two days, like, I think it was Friday and Saturday, where, like, I would not have cared to see a single person. So, we decided to sell our tickets. We did lose a little bit of money on them because, again, I don't think – I think Coachella's out this year. Like, it's not a thing anymore. And so I decided to sell our tickets. Um, and so, yeah, that's – we're still going to go to California because we were like, let's still make a trip out of it. Um, so we're going to do San Diego and L.A. And I'm really excited because I haven't really explored San Diego at all. Like, I've never really explored it. So I'm really pumped to see San Diego because everyone that I talk to says it's one of their favorite cities, and I can't believe that I've never been. So yeah, that's kind of my future travel plans. And then in May, I am going to Sweden, and I'm seeing the Eras Tour in Sweden. I think it's her second concert or her second city back on tour. And so, and it's going to be after the Tortured Poets Department comes out. So I am so excited to see her again I saw her in Atlanta and it was also one of her first cities in the U.S. it's like the first two months first month or something I'm actually seeing her like a year later so I saw her at the very end of April last year um and then now I'm seeing her in in May of this year so it'll be a year of seeing her and I really want to go to her show in Miami also but tickets are so expensive so I am praying on finding a way to get tickets to that show so whether it is through a brand deal please any brands I will make so much content for you if you send me to the Aerith store in Miami or I will I don't know like maybe a brand deal will invite me or um I feel like in Miami it's one of those cities where like everyone knows someone 
Like every everyone knows someone. Like everyone gets free stuff somehow. And so I'm hoping that I know someone that can get me tickets to that show. I feel like the Alexis meme from Schitt's Creek when she's like, I'm not going to lie to you, David. You are never getting tickets to that show. Like that's what I feel like right now, but I will find a way. Um, I have a friend that used to work for a sports team here who actually did have tickets. Like she was going to invite me to the Aeros tour and she moved and got another job, but I am hoping that somehow we can still make it work, you know? Like, I'm really hoping we can still make it work because I am a big Swifty and I just, there's zero chance she comes to Miami and I don't go. Like, that's just like not happening. Like, I will pay the money if I have to. Like, I, tickets are like $1,000. I will pay it, but I don't want to pay it, you know? Like, that's one of those things where I'm like, it is worth it because it is just the best concert ever. And I feel like if you're not a Swifty, you don't understand. You're like, oh, my God, that's so stupid. People are spending so much money on this. I can't believe people are like, you know, what makes her so great? Like, I'm literally flying to Europe. While, meanwhile, I mean, I am planning a trip around it. I did this because I was like, OK, Taylor Swift and travel count me in. Um, and people are like, I don't understand why you're doing that. If like, even if you're not a Swifty, you have to go to the Eras tour. I know it's on Disney Plus now, and you can definitely see it on there and, like, see all the effort and work that she puts into it. But I know every single one of her songs. She, like... She feeds us, you guys. Like, I saw this TikTok of someone saying that, you know, like, they're not a Swifty necessarily. Like, they're, um, like, a, in the beehive, you know, let's say, like, a Beyonce fan. And she's like, but I'm jealous of Swifties because, like, the Taylor feeds you guys. Like, there is new music coming out every few months. Like, I, not even once a year. Like, every few months now with, like, the Taylor's version albums and stuff, it's like, she's putting out new new music. Whereas, like... Beyonce or like anyone else it's like every few years you get a new album like Ariana Grande just released a new album but it's like years later and that's what I just have to say I appreciate Taylor thank you thank you for keeping us fed you know we never have to go hungry so that's all I'm gonna say about that but yeah that's kind of like my catch-up I know that was such a big part of this episode but this episode is actually about impulsivity and it makes sense since it's March 21st it was planned it was in the stars you know (laughs) I'm I'm kidding. But impulsivity. This is one of my favorite topics because I've talked about how I am an impulsive person on here. And also, this is something pro tip. I feel like a lot of people that listen to me are a little older. But if you are out of college, you're applying to your first job and someone asks you, what is your biggest weakness? You know how some people are like, oh, I'm a perfectionist and I just like, you know, I I want things to be perfect, whatever. I actually think this is a good answer is I'm an impulsive person. I'm pretty sure that's probably what I said when I was applying for Accenture because I've always known this about myself. So I think impulsivity is a good one because it actually could be a negative. Like it actually could be a weakness. But I think if you're placed in the right environment, it's actually such a strength. And so it's a really good answer for what is your biggest weakness. And we're going to talk about it. Okay. So I wanted to talk about my impulsivity and how I am, how being impulsive has served me well, how it's grown my career. And I was talking on this on a podcast yesterday. It's called the Visibility uh, pod- Visibility on Purpose podcast. And I am so excited for that episode to come out. But anyways, this is about I've had a lot of conversations with friends about this recently, about how you just have to go for it. You just have to do it. You just have to be impulsive. And I've started realizing this about myself is that I'm so grateful that I am an impulsive person and that I'm not an overthinker because it's literally gotten me to where I am today. And don't get me wrong. It's also made me make mistakes too, but I would one million times over make the same mistakes again if it means still like being where I am today. And I don't think it's ever held me back in a way where it's like I've made this huge catastrophic mistake that I can't recover from. I think I've always been able to bounce back because of my impulsive nature. So I think the word impulsive has a very negative connotation. I actually have the definition out for you. The definition is to do things suddenly without thinking about them carefully first, which doesn't really sound great. It kind of can mean like, oh, you're selfish or, you know, you are going to hurt people or anything like that. And while I think obviously, depending on the situation, it can, it it can definitely be a negative. Um, I think in general, it can serve a lot of people well, because more people overthink things, have a lot of anxiety about things, are scared to do something. 
I think that's more common than just like going for it. And I think that if you want to, you know, I I just think it's it's better for everyone to have a little bit of impulsivity in them and just do it. That is why the Nike slogan is my absolute favorite. Just do it. I wish I trademarked that before they did because that's like my favorite. Like I will always encourage anyone to just go for it and just like get things done. So, of course, there's obviously nuance with that. Like, if you have a family, if you have kids, you can't necessarily be impulsive. I I, I actually shouldn't say you can't be impulsive. You can't be as impulsive. Like, I am a single woman who is turning 28 this year, who works for herself. Like, of course, my impulsivity barometer is could be higher or my impulsivity threshold could be higher than someone that has a family and kids. And I totally understand that. But I do think everyone can have it in them to be a little bit impulsive and just kind of go for things. And so I want to talk about how I have been impulsive in my life and in my business and how you can do it too. And I, I'm always like the encouraging friend, I think, like in in the sense that like if someone wants to start something, if someone wants to do something, if someone needs any encouragement or motivation of like, oh my gosh, is this a crazy idea or not? They come to me. And I'm so grateful for that because I truly think that that is like my God-given gift (laughs) is to encourage people. And we actually took this quiz at church the other day. It was about, you know, what is like the, yeah, like your God-given gift, I guess. And it was like a quiz and mine was the encourager. And I was like, this makes sense because this is what people always come to me for. And I think I'm a very good person to encourage people, whether it's in real life, whether it's on the internet, or even if it's myself, I feel like I'm kind of good at doing that. And so I think it's because I have these impulsive tendencies. And so let's talk about it from a life perspective first, because I think every person listening to this can agree with this or can, or not agree with this, can, um, use some of this in their life and can relate to it. So impulsivity in life. I've actually started to say yes to a lot more things lately. And I was talking to my friend about this yesterday, but I am someone who I feel like I used to be a little bit, I I would say yes to events. Like I would say yes to any events, to hanging out, to commitments. And I've actually started being better at being like, okay, I don't have like the capacity for that. I don't have the bandwidth for that. I'm going to, you know, say no and politely decline. But when it comes to new experiences, meeting new people, like going on dates, like things like that, I've been saying yes to more things and not thinking about it too much. Like, for example, if it's, it's been a way that it has like freed up a lot of my anxiety, because let's say if I, if a guy asks me out, instead of being like, oh my gosh, like, let me find all of his red flags. Is this the guy for me? I don't know this, like being like overly critical at first. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to say yes to the first hangout, to the first date. And after that, I can assess and I can say, you know, nice to meet you, but I don't see this going anywhere. No, thanks. You know, but I feel like it puts less pressure because before I was like, I have to make sure that this guy has the potential to be the one. And I need to find out everything about him before I even hang out with him. And like, I actually have, stop doing that and I've put way less pressure on it and I'm not like overthinking what I'm wearing I'm not overthinking like what I look like I'm not overthinking what we're doing I'm just like you know what I'm gonna say yes and I'm gonna be impulsive and and I'm gonna you know do these things and I'm not even gonna say it's like for the plot because I think that can get you like in trouble sometimes when everything you do is like for the plot but for me it's for like personal development like let's change it to that because for me I'm like wow I am learning so much about myself by putting myself in these situations that I might have said no to in the past and I am letting myself like just try new things and meet new people and it's actually been I, I've literally learned so much about myself in just the past few months from saying yes to more things. And so I don't want to say like only in terms of dating, because I think this could mean with hanging out with new friends, with meeting new people, with doing activities and hobbies. Like that's another thing I've been impulsive on. And it's also freed up anxiety because for example, I wanted to start taking tennis lessons. I wanted to start running. Keep in mind, I am the least athletic person that I know. There's not like an athletic bone in my body. I think I'm fit, but I am not athletic. And maybe that's a mental block that I need to get out of because maybe once I stop saying that, maybe I'll actually be able to like be more athletic. But I don't consider myself an athletic person. I don't think anyone knows me, considers me athletic. I never really grew up playing sports or anything like that. So for me, it's very much out of my comfort zone. I started taking tennis lessons last year um, or maybe even two years ago now. It's been it's been a while since I started taking tennis lessons and I 
am not doing it to be the best. Like I am not starting tennis lessons because I want to be the best tennis player. I am starting it simply because I want to get myself out of my comfort zone and do something that I haven't done before. Same thing with running. I am not a runner. I haven't ran in since college. You guys, I graduated in 2018. Like I have not ran since college and even in college I would barely run, but like I I don't think I've ran like more than 3 miles. Like <laughs> in like my life <laughs> like I'm not a runner um and this year I was like you know what I've always told myself that I'm not a runner I've always said that I hate running but what if I just do it and what if I do a training plan and I see how I like it like let's see what happens and again I didn't start because I wanted to be the best I started just because I wanted to do it and I just downloaded Nike Run Club and I started there was no like mental prep for it it was no like oh my gosh I need to hype myself up I need to over like I need to come up with a plan I need to do that I was just like downloaded the first app and started the first run and that was it I didn't really think about the future that much I didn't think about well how does this fit into my schedule or what am I what are my travel plans and I'll start after that I was just like no I'm just gonna start and have I been that consistent with it? Not not too much. But I feel like that impulsivity of being like, I'm just going to do something and I'm doing it because I just want to. Like, that's it. No other explanation. I just want to has helped me so much because there's no pressure with it. I can, there's no like expectation with it. I don't have a goal around it. It's not numbers driven. It's just purely because I want to. And I feel like that is what's going to help me like become better. And that's how I started my YouTube channel. I know it was forever ago and I'm a freaking grandma on here and I'm a veteran. But when I started my YouTube channel, I just wanted to. I remember watching uh, watching some YouTubers and at the time this is 2011 so it was like Juicy Star 07 and that's what I was watching. I remember watching a few of her videos like literally probably like three. Like I think I watched I think I started watching YouTube videos on a Sunday and I made my first one on a Wednesday of that same exact week because I was like I can do this why not and when I started my YouTube channel back then I didn't start because I thought that I would be a YouTuber. Obviously times are different but like that's not why I started. Like when I started my podcast, I didn't start because I was like, this is going to be my full-time thing. I'm a podcaster. I started because I wanted to. I ordered the equipment off Amazon literally the day that I like listened to my first podcast. I was like, I can do this. Why don't I? And I wanted to, and I had an interest. And I think we should start becoming more like following our interests more. And I've talked about this in a previous episode, but I think a lot of impulsivity is a lot about chasing after anything that interests you and just going for it and doing it and so many people always say like um what is it like be curious or chase your curiosity and I think that's really great and I think it's great advice to be curious but I think what's even better is to chase what you're interested in so if you have any desire or anything that you're like remotely curious about or interested in doing do it like literally start chasing it so that is kind of what I say it's always just like just do it and start chasing it and I feel like things are going to open up for you and you're going to get the ball rolling and then fear and anxiety is hopefully going to decrease because you're just going to have faith that like or confidence I shouldn't even say faith you're going to have confidence that you already started and that's like honestly the hardest step for so many people that's kind of how I've been like being impulsive in my life and same with like travel for example we were just talking about the Eras tour and how I'm going to Sweden I booked any city in Europe I booked the ones that I thought I would get tickets to so I didn't try for like London and Paris and like the popular cities but I was like okay Sweden I feel like isn't a top choice for a lot of Americans to go to so I'm gonna try to book it so I, I applied for like Sweden and Poland because I figured that those two were the ones that people weren't necessarily applying to in the United States and so I got those tickets I got both of them I didn't purchase the Poland ones but I was like able to get access to them and with the Sweden one I was just like I don't know who I'm going with I don't know like where like I've I've never been I, I we haven't even planned the trip yet it's March 21st the concert's on May 17th I have not even booked a plane ticket yet or anything I've booked the Airbnb and that was it and I'm like I I just am doing it I'm gonna go for it and obviously I know that there are some things where you're impulsive and it's with money like for example if you don't have money you're not gonna be able to just book an expensive concert ticket or an expensive flight like I'm not saying that but you know what you can do you can make a, like take a road trip you can um post your first video you can you know like there are some things that anyone can do regardless of I think 
finances. And so that's what I hope this encourages you for. I know obviously there are some where it's like, okay, there is a limit of what you can be impulsive for. I'm not saying be impulsive, buy the ticket and go into credit card debt. Absolutely not. Please be financially responsible. This is not financial advice. So when it comes to money, I'm not saying be impulsive and blow your finances. That is not what I'm saying. Please do things that are in your financial means. But for me, that is in my financial means. And so I wanted to be impulsive and do it. And a lot of times you might overthink and you might be like, ah, like, I don't know, like I need to like prep so much for this trip or I need to, you know, book things so far in advance or I need to, but, and it's like, I am someone that I just want to make these memories and I want to take these experiences and I want to do it. And also there are so many inexpensive ways to do things too, like staying in a hostel, backpacking, all of these things that it might not be comfortable. It might not be, you know, in your comfort zone, but I think it's going to make, it's, it's going to be for the personal development, not for the plot, for personal development. So I always, and, and for me, for example, like I prioritize travel. So I put it in my budget. Like that is a budget item for me. And it is one of the more important ones because of how much I prioritize it and how much I want to be able to make these, you know, go on these trips and do these things on a whim. So yeah, that's kind of how I've been impulsive in life and how I think it's served me really well because I've not only grown so much as a person, but I have just grown a lot as a person, but I've also have like so many amazing memories and I have like the best stories that have come out of it and it's just been great. So that's like from life and in from a business perspective, I think so many times people think that you have to have this like long thought out business plan in order to be successful. And I am anti-business plan, you guys. I think that a business plan only makes you overthink. It's honestly busy work. Actually, I think over I think a business plan is busy work because the second your business launches, that business plan out the window. That no matter what you put in that business plan, it's going to change. Our business, like Rella, has pivoted so much since we started. And not from our ideal mission and vision and everything like that. It's not like we're a completely new product. But what we thought was going to work didn't work. What we thought was going to focus on, we've changed what we're focusing on. Who our ideal customer was, that's changed. Our messaging, that's changed. Like the product itself has changed and expanded. And that's such a good thing because we tested it, we put it out there, we we iterated, we pivoted. And I think a lot of times if you're not impulsive, you're going to be stuck trying to make decisions. And by the time you make a decision, it's too late. Or if you're married to a certain idea and it all of a sudden the idea stops working, you're going to think like, okay, well, it has to work because you in your head are like married to this idea. When if you start adopting a more impulsive personality, you're just gonna say, okay guys, we tried it, on to the next. Let's let's try something else. Let's let's go head first in something else. And you're gonna be quick. And I think when it comes to business, being quick and decisive and impulsive is a really, really good thing. And you might make mistakes. You will make mistakes. But I think whether or not you have a plan and you have a business plan and you spent two weeks making a decision, you're also going to make mistakes. And so isn't it better to make mistakes quickly than to sit on something and then make a mistake, but it took actually a month for the mistake to even be like realized rather than a week? Like I feel like making mistakes is part of it. So you might as well do it as quickly as possible. And that's kind of like my philosophy with why I am so impulsive in business too. And I also think that you have to just like take the first step whenever it is that you're starting something. So if you want to start a business, instead of overthinking it and thinking, yeah, I have to come up with a plan and, or let's say content creation. I think that's something a lot of people listening can probably relate to. Instead of saying, okay, I need to batch all this content and then I need to schedule it out and then I need to have a plan and then I'm going to launch. Why don't you just start with one? Why don't you just launch one piece of content, post one piece of content, start again, I say this all the time, but like exercising your content muscle putting it out there and then you get better. No one's going to get better with content by batch filming things. Like that's not how you get better. You get better by putting it out there and seeing what the response is and then iterating from there and pivoting from there and getting better from there. So if you are someone listening and you're like, I'm going to start my, you know, I'm going to start putting out content, but like, ugh, I don't know what to start or I need to batch this or I don't have time, blah, blah, blah. Everyone has time to post one video every single person, it's a matter of prioritizing it and just doing it. And so instead of overthinking it, just right now, literally, I give you permission to stop this podcast. 
do take the first step. And that might look different for everyone. It might be starting a website. It might be hiring or maybe hiring is not the first step, but it might be talking to people. It might be putting a job application up there. It might be, you know, applying to something, applying to a grant. It might be sitting down and being like, I'm going to come up with the mission statement, the slogan, whatever it is. But just start because you're going to give yourself confidence and then you're going to like take that next step and the next step and the next step. And hopefully this can encourage you that you don't need to overthink it and you can kind of just do it on a whim. So that is what I want to talk about this episode. I really hope this was like a boot camp coach training you and being like, do it, do it, do it, do it. Like be impulsive because that is exactly what I wanted this episode to be. Um, and it makes sense for the month of April. So <laughs> I hope that this gave you also an insight on my brain and how I am someone that doesn't overthink. Like for example, the business plan thing, you know what I made a business plan for? My online store. You know what didn't work out? My online store. Business plans don't, don't work. They don't. I'm anti-business plan. You heard it here. Um, but I hope that this encouraged you and I hope that you are hopefully going to start something after this. And if you do, let me know what it is. Let me know what this was encouraging you for. And I hope you loved this episode. The catch up in the beginning was so needed. And I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, any feedback is encouraged. Let's get the comment section going. And I will see you guys in my next episode. Bye guys.